You see, they keep me waiting at home. I was ready on time, and then they say, Master, nobody was here. <laughs> so I think uh, maybe I have a nice holiday. <laughs> and then, and then about, I waited very long, and she said to me, some of the, you know, the disciples who came early, she said to me, Oh, now there are some people coming. So I begin to put on my, my cup, <laughs> my clothes. No, it was long ago. And then she still said, you have to wait. So I, stood, I was having nothing to do, so I put on earrings. And then later she said, still nobody comes. So I put on my necklace. <laughs> and then she said, still nobody coming huh? about 20 minutes later. And she said, still put on bracelets, you know. <laughs> now I know why the woman put on so many things. <laughs> just to pass the time. <laughs> so now you see me all dressed up and beautiful, but late. <laughs> and later when I cannot wait anymore, I say, now I'm coming, doesn't matter what happened, you know. <laughs> I'm just going, yeah. Because he say, uh, nobody is here, uh, not yet, and uh, not many people. I say, never mind, doesn't matter how many, I will come. So that's how I started to, uh, you know, to go out. Otherwise, they keep me waiting until maybe tomorrow morning. <laughs> because she's used to with a, a big lecture, you know, when I, I go lecture, there's a big, huge hall and so many people. So today for her, it's, it's like nobody. <laughs> so I'm sorry that, uh, you know, the uh, fellow practitioner kept you waiting. I should have come earlier. But if I listened to them, I wouldn't have come, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you still love me as usual, huh? Uh, thanks. <laughs> so, Tony. I would like to introduce Jeffrey McCord. McCord? Is that right? McGordy. Sorry, Jeffrey. He's going to share with us a spiritual experience. Beautiful. Please give him a warm welcome. I found out about the Master about a year ago. A disciple gave me a simple booklet. And immediately after seeing the picture and reading the booklet, I was um, just started being filled with joy and really excited because everything the Master said in the book was totally the truth and it was in total harmony with my own feelings inside. It was like uh, an echo of the own, my own voice of what I thought was the right way, the right thing. So I brought the book home and immediately I started to sing the Master's name, just uh, cu coming out of me, singing praise for the Master and praying, praying to the book <laughs> and praying uh, to the Master. For a couple of days this went on, and I started to uh, feel a change already within me. It was like I was uh, floating, or all the energy inside me was condensed and, and brought up to the top of my head here. And I, when I looked around, I felt really blissful because everything seemed perfect and there was nothing wrong. I was totally satisfied with everything. And I never had uh, this type of experience before. This, it was a contentment that I, that I really can't describe. It's not like anything else. So after feeling this, I started to think, uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're going a little crazy or something. I would find myself, you know, the, the book, it's, I've read books by spiritual masters before, but this book, it's, it's not too big, it's kind of thin. I was thinking, you know, it's very thin. Why, why are you getting so excited about such a small book? But I felt it must be, uh, this must, master must be great if, if, it's having, if it's touching you this deeply, if you're having this kind of reaction to it. So I went back to the disciple and I borrowed a video and uh, when I watched the video, it confirmed my feelings because when I saw the Master in the video, the Master was radiating light and um, the energy... the video. <laughs> or maybe, maybe the TV. TV. <laughs> Anyways, the energy coming from the video itself was so strong too that I, I could hardly stay conscious to watch it. Uh, and after that point, I started to uh, hear the inner sound that the Master had described about in her lectures and books. At first I thought uh, maybe I had a hearing problem, you know, uh, I should go to the doctor or something. 
But after talking to some disciple, they say, Oh, no, no, that's okay, the Master is blessing you. So, I continued to watch some more videos and wait kind of impatiently, very anxiously for the Master to come and give a lecture so I could get initiated and, and practice this Sana Light method called the Kuan Yin. And the Master came about seven months after that time and I got initiation in Washington, D.C. And uh, when the Master, I first saw the physical Master, my heart just exploded. And uh, it, my, my soul just ran in every direction, you know, and tears came pouring out of my eyes. It was like, uh, like more than a mother, you know, <laughs> more, more than missing your mother or any, any person. It was like missing, missing your true self you know, and seeing your true self and, and reuniting with it. So I got initiation and at that point I realized that um, I'm, I'm not the physical body but I'm made up of finer qualities of sound and light and that I understand my purpose here is uh, not just to enjoy the material world but is to find my true self and to bless the world around me. When I had these experiences of hearing the sound before even personally meeting the Master, it really convinced me of this Master's omnipresent powers that without even, uh, you know, seeing her or being so far away from her, she could hear my longing and also return it with a reply. So I'd like to give uh, many, 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 many thanks to the Master and uh, I hope you open your hearts and mind and really cherish this experience. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Mahaji. <laughs> I just call you Mahaji, that would be fine. <laughs> Thank you that, uh, so that we had the opportunity to see each other and also to have a devotional day to God in whatever form and name we may call this Supreme Godhead. Yes. I have to thank you and all of the people who have made this effort to push me here, <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> so every time I had a chance to give a lecture or to, get, to be in a gathering, then I'd be again thankful and thankful, because then I feel that uh, I'm doing something right. <laughs> but if nobody re demand or request or push me into this kind of uh, work, then I won't do anything. Yes, and, and I also don't feel anything about it. <laughs> I mean, I don't feel regret or I don't feel remorse, uh, remorseful, yeah, that I don't do the job. But uh, every time I'm in a lecture or <clears throat> have the opportunity to see people, I feel very grateful, yes, that, that, that somebody had made the effort to, to push me, <laughs> to push me here. <laughs> Otherwise, I just don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why it's such a beautiful job and I never desired to do. I don't know why. But every time I do it, I feel it's good, you know, it's good that I should do it. But then I never desired to do it again. And then if somebody pushed me out to, to, <laughs> to, to give a lecture or something, then I'm grateful again that I do it. <laughs> do you know what that is? Huh? Must be laziness, huh, I think. <laughs> I really don't understand myself. People just saying that when you're enlightened and you're a master, you're supposed to know yourself. <laughs> but I must confess, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can just equally be happy, stay home and sleep. <laughs> so I really don't know. But when I'm here, I'm very happy and grateful that I'm here. And when I'm in bed and sleep, I'm happy and grateful that, that I sleep. <laughs> so, but I truly am grateful that you have pushed me to come here and, you know, I, I feel just good, very good. And probably I, I become a little bit useful. So, and also the, ta the temple is useful, <laughs> that we can gather together and have a nice devotional day. 
to the Supreme God. Yes. Surely, if we don't have spiritual food, doesn't matter what we eat, it will never satisfy us mentally and physically. Therefore, <laughs> therefore we keep uh, getting hunger and hunger, yeah, hungry and hungry again and again. And even we eat a lot of nice food and vitamin, we still get sick and sometimes uh, distressed, yeah, and indigestion. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned that um, the food which was prepared for offering to God first, and then we eat it, it should be very, uh, I'll say, nutritious and full of blessing for us. If, however, we prepare the food just for personal satisfaction, then we truly make mistake, and that will give us a lot of uh, unsatisfaction and sometimes trouble in digestion and all that. Because actually in the Bhagavad Gita it says stronger than this, say very strongly that like, you eat in sin, you, you don't offer first to God. So it's not me who spoke like that, huh? it's Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now, same is not only food. Oh, all of you know the Bhagavad Gita or not? Except the Indian people. All the people know Bhagavad Gita? You don't know? That's the Book of Wisdom of ancient India. It's about 5,000 years old. Is that not so, Maji? Yeah, yes, yes. <coughs> and it was spoken by the Supreme Master of that time, Krishna, the beloved black beauty. <laughs> Is that right? He was black and beautiful, right? <laughs> no, we call him dark beautiful, right? <laughs> Is that the one or the other one? Krishna was, huh? He said. His complexion was so dark, you know, like many Indian people. But he's so beautiful and handsome that the people call him heartbreaker also, because he breaks everybody's heart when he lives. <laughs> and whenever, wherever he goes, people love him, adore him, and make offering to him, and just follow him madly, madly. I heard that he has about 70,000 wives, or no, 16, no, 16,000 wives. Well, the Indian people sometimes exaggerate things, but <laughs> he must have a lot of followers, you know, a lot of followers. It's not really wives, you know, disciples. Mostly are, probably, mostly are women, because probably he was very handsome. I, I heard, you know, I wasn't there. <laughs> Maybe I was there, but I forgot. <laughs> so the Bhagavad Gita is a record of, of the teaching of the Master, yeah? Krishna. So now, you can find much wisdom and uh, guidance in this book. I still look at it from time to time. I still do, yes, because it's be very beautiful, concentrate, and wise. Yes. Sometimes you get solace and uh, calmness by reading that book. If you truly understand and digest it, it is a wonderful masterpiece of wisdom. Many of uh, the master of the past had connection with Indian law. Therefore, we could not, not to mention India and the Bhagavad Gita. Even Milarepa, you know, the, the great uh, yogi of Tibet, yeah, you know? Or should I still tell another story again? You know, huh? The disciples should know Milarepa, no? I told many stories, okay, now, even he, uh, that great yogi of Tibet, his possession consisted of, uh, you know, maybe a pot and the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> now, in that book, it is mentioned not only the food, that we should first prepare it in the spirit of offering to God before we take it, but everything else we do in life must be an offering must be a sacrifice to the Supreme Spirit. In that case, we will never reap any bad or any good result out of that, because bad result or good result bind us to this material world. 
even if sometimes we cannot help ourselves, we become kind of we lose our temper, we get angry, yes, and we know we shouldn't. And then sometimes we feel very, very sorry for a long time after our anger has already subsided. But I tell you, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself any time. Whatever you do, just make offering to God and let it be whatever the outcome. Because we are not the body anyhow. We are not the action. We are not the doer of anything in this world. Even if we are, suppose we are the doers, we still have to forgive yourself, forgive ourselves when we make mistakes or when we cannot help with our, I would say, habit like uh, angry, anger, or sometimes greed and sometimes lustful thoughts because these things also arise from the circumstances. It's not the truly the self, it's not truly the soul that desire all these things. So we have to always again try again and again and forgive ourselves after all, I mean above all, because the inside is God, the supreme wisdom. So we can't, we can't scold it, <laughs> we can't uh, say abuse it, we can't be rude to it. You understand what I mean? So if we are angry with ourselves, we should be angry only with our habit. Yes, the habit, our habit, our accumulated habit. Or we should blame the situation also, not to blame the Supreme Wisdom, the real self, because the real self never err, never make any mistakes. Suppose we are even the doer, and we are in this society like this. <coughs> Sometimes we get angry. It's not always our fault. Most of the time it is not. Sometimes it's everything can make us angry. For example, you work in a company and you work with the wrong personnel, right? Whatever you tell him, he just doesn't understand. Or he understood but he, he does the, the other way around. He just makes you angry and angry and angry. And even you forgive him again and again, he repeats repeatedly doing that. Very small thing, even small thing, irritates our mind and makes us feel miserable. So it is good that we know that there is something else above the mind and above the body, because the body is composed of only, uh, I'll say, material substance like earth, water, iron, yeah? Well, our iron inside is much enough to make a few nails, you know? <laughs> and water, yes, and earth, and maybe fire, the vital, vital fire, so that the body will be warm and all that. And the mind is consisted of what? It's just the collection of all kind of information, bad and good. And it is just like a computer. Whatever you program it, yeah? And when you push the button, it comes out the same, right? Come out the same. One of our fellow practitioners, he has an electric organ, organ, yeah, piano. And he programmed it into different uh, a musical rhyme, yeah, and when he can he can play it again in from the cassette. So the same thing with our brain. It would be empty. It would be absolutely blank, just like a new brand new computer. And until we start to record things and information, and sometimes good, sometimes bad. So if we happen to record the good information, then when we I want to uh, uh, make use of it, then the good information come out. And if we happen to uh, uh, record the bad information, then of course it come out, the, inf the bad information. So now, to meditate, to pray to God, or to study the holy scriptures is 
just a way to reprogram our thinking, our way of life. And because we reprogram it in a good way, so the result comes out always good, or at least not as bad as before, or at least not all bad. Even though we can't help to record some more bad information daily, but the the how to say the the number will be less than before, right? Because we keep recording good things, like we meditate, we meditate on the God name, we meditate on God power, and we get the God power coming through us, filling us with joy and virtues and goodness. Then even the bad information comes in; it has no room, and also maybe minimized. And because of the goodness and the powerful energy from God through meditation each day, we will be able to dilute or maybe digest completely any information that is harmful to our mind and our soul. That's why we cannot not to meditate. We cannot not to study holy scriptures. Most people, many people, don't like to study holy scriptures. Why? Because they don't understand. So I heard many of the holy men from churches, from temples, they complain that the young people or the people of today do not like to study scriptures, do not like to study holy book. But because. Most of the holy scriptures are too profound, too sophisticated, too deep, sometimes too difficult for the modern man, for the layman to understand. But we have one solution. First, we have to open the understanding power. Then we can understand the Bible or the scriptures. Anything you get your hand. Uh, I say, anything you you get into your hands, you will be any book you will be able to understand. I also could not understand much of what is said in the Bible or in the Bhagavad Gita or in the uh, um, the Buddhist scriptures or in the uh, let's say Lao Tzu books and all that. Yeah, Kung Tzu Lao Tzu book I read. I understood somehow, but not, not as profound, not as deep as I do now, because after our、uh, power of understanding is open, the the wisdom is、uh, how to say it's it's made to be useful again. Then we can understand many things. So if.、Uh, We do not understand the scriptures, and the best thing is first to get enlightenment. Enlightened means you open the power of understanding, and then the heavenly light, godly light, will shed all understanding upon any object that we wish to study. So that's why even now in the college, people you know, teach the students. Many kind of meditation, at least to calm their、uh, how to say turbulent mind. And if they have a better meditation, the good kind of meditation, which can even open the seat, the 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 door of wisdom, the power of understanding, then so much better for them. Therefore, many of the students who study. In college, but at the same time meditate, they find it easier to master any subject that they want to study, and they were always very good at school. They're always good at school. This is a fact that everybody knows by now. Why is that? We heard of reincarnation. Why there is reincarnation? It is because. We do not know the real self, and we chase after the the how to say the container of the self. 
Therefore, we chase after one to another. For example, the water in the sea is all one, yeah? And then if we happen to put it in a cup, or we put a cup into the sea like this, and then we seal it, <laughs> then the water, in this, the water in the cup is separated from the ocean, right? Understand? But as soon as the cup is broken, then it becomes one with the ocean again. And if uh, the water inside the cup is attached to the container, and then after it's broken, it goes and seek another cup, you know what I mean? Then it will forever be separated with the ocean. Our real self is not contained in this body because it's all pervading. And this is just one of the stations, one of the things that you know, I mean, contain a little bit of ourselves. Therefore, when we broke this limitation, we will be one with the whole. And we don't have to break the body <laughs> to go out. There is a way to go out. For example, we don't need to break the cup to free the ocean, to free the water in the cup. We can just, you know, where it's leaking or there is a hole somewhere. And then so even the cup is still there, and the water is still inside, but at the same time, the water is in and out all the time and connect with the whole ocean. Understand? Similarly, our cup here, the body, has a hole. <laughs> and it's blocked. Yeah? It's made blocked. So to keep the soul of life, the water of life inside, but we can open it. Similarly, some of the cup, you know, is all, uh, is, is all made like this, but there is a, a hole in the bottom, and then, and then they use a plastic uh, cover to cover it, right? Uh, any, any, or sometimes medicine bottle also. And then we just take the, the, the little uh, cap, yeah, plastic cap or something, and then we can uh, connect with the contained inside. So there is a, a place where we can be connected with the whole universe while still keeping this instrument, the body. That is the third eye center, the seat of wisdom, the seat of the soul, if it's opened by any mean at all, by our own perseverance, power of desire for liberation or through a master, then we will be connected right away with the whole universe, with the Most High, which is all over places. The power of the Most High is not only contained in this body, but it's in the air right now, it's everywhere. It's in every blade of grass, in the leaves of the trees, in all creation. It is easier to open it if we have an experienced guy, you know, who has already been connected with the whole universal power, then that he is very powerful because he doesn't use individual power anymore. He uses the whole universal power, understand? Because he's already connected. Just like the water in the in the cup, even though it's still in the cup, but it's always connected with the, 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 the ocean water through the hole and there's always fresh water coming in and out, in and out, even though it's still contained in the cup. Therefore, a master or an enlightened person is like that. The initiated person uh, are the one who has this, you know, the, the um, connection, has the connection, has the, the button open, yes. And the master is the one who realizes the universal power, even though we all have it, but the Master is the one who realizes it. It's just like if two persons uh, have um, the same amount of money inherited from the Father, but the one who knows it, who, know where, who knows where it is, can use it, no? Right? And the other one, even though he has it, but he put it somewhere or, or he never know where it is, can he use it? He cannot write. Similarly, similarly, we are all the same. But if we know 
where to use our universal power, then we become master of ourselves, master of our destiny. And we can lead many of others to become master of their own destiny as well. Otherwise, even though we are equally great, but we don't know our greatness, and that's a waste of time. Therefore, we have to come back again, again, and again in search for this treasure until we find it. Then our journey ends. Very simple. Hmm? We are here to search for this forgotten treasure, and we will never give up until we find it. That's why our life is never satisfied, never satisfactorily, because we always know there is something else, something else greater than what we have right now. We always somehow know that we are not this container, you know, the flesh, because after we so-called die, the, the, the body is still there, but we cannot move, we cannot do anything, we cannot love any person, we cannot open our mouth, we cannot do anything at all. That means we are not the body. Something in the body is there to make the body move and work while we are living. Something in the body left when we die, so we cannot move. Uh, any of our bodily instruments. So somehow we know, very deep in our heart we know. Well, I know. I don't know if you know. <laughs> you know, huh? You must know. That's why sometimes you, when you have time, right, when you are in uh, trouble especially, and sometimes you sit down, you don't want to be with anyone, you just want to be alone. And then you think, and then you feel better and better. Because you thought there is something there, something that sometimes comforts us in silence. I used to be like that before I know the Guan Yin Method. I used to pray a lot. I prayed to Buddha and I prayed to Jesus. I'm afraid one of them cannot hear. <laughs> so I pray to anyone I know. Sometimes I pray to Krishna or you know, Hindu God. <laughs> There's no Hindu God, it's only God actually. Just sometimes God. God, uh, how say, resume an Indian form or a Chinese form, so we call this an Hindu God, Chinese God. Actually, there's no such thing, huh? Okay. So when uh, sometimes when I'm in deep sorrow, I was in deep sorrow before I know the Guanyin Method. Then I pray very deeply, uh, just to be alone, not to pray very loud, but to, you know what I mean, to truly lament inside, and then I feel like something lifted me up, you know, and I feel so soothing and so smooth, and I feel like, well, there's nothing to worry about. That is a time when we realize that something is greater than life. Something is always there to listen to us. Most of people pray and, and they say they don't have the, 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 the response because they don't pray deeply enough. That's why we have more response when we are in deep sorrow, because we truly are sincere at that time. <laughs> and then we pierce through all the layers of pretending of, uh, I would say, hypocr hypocrisy, hypocrisy, hypocrisy. And we pierce through our, you know, false self, and we get in touch somehow, even briefly, with the true self. That's when we get the response. But I suggest that we don't have to wait until we are in deep sorrow to do this. <laughs> that would be too, too traumatic, yes. So we have a better way to do. We practice it, even when we are not in sorrow. That would be better. We practice before we die. That would be better. So when we die, just like we walk from one room to the next, no problem. And we can walk out forever. We can break the whole cup and be united with the whole ocean, or we can keep it. Or we can seek another cup in order to satisfy someone else's uh, say, longing or to help some, someone else. It's like the Master, sometimes the Master reincarnates again and again into different bodies in order to help mankind. Some Master just like to enjoy heaven, enjoy nirvana, and never want to go back again. Some master never, 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 ever incarnated on this earth. 
no intention to do. Some master incarnate again, 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 and again in order to help the children who are suffering, who has the great treasure but don't know how to use it. Therefore, being very poor, <laughs> poor and miserable. In India, people appreciate the masters very much. They worship the master even more than God <laughs> because of this reason. They say, oh, what? If the Master and God appear right now, both of them appear right now, I would only worship the Master. I don't care about God. <laughs> they just a kind of... It is just a kind of uh, adoration and gratefulness to the Master. Actually, they worship the Master because of God. They worship God because of the Master. Without Master, they don't know that true God exists or not. Yes. And without God power, the Master is also nothing. Understand? So we all came from God, whether it's Master or not Master. <laughs> the Master is the one who knows God, <laughs> and the non-Master is the one who don't know God yet, but they still have God. They are still from saying, I told you about the story of the cup, hmm? the ocean water in the cup. So at the time, at the time of initiation, is um, you know already, uh, the button is push open so then we can get in touch somewhat, you know, to God, at least for some moments. And then we continue to do that every day until we completely realize that we are one with God, there's no separation. You see, there are many things that the initiated person understand and know, but difficult to put them into words, right? Yes. Me also. And if nobody demands anything from me, I would not even think of God, you know what I mean? He just uh, kind of uh, always standing around, oh, or He's just inside me, so I don't even think of Him. I don't talk about Him. I don't miss Him. I don't seek Him anymore. Just for other people's sake that I talk about God, I talk about these things. And sometimes difficult for me to talk <laughs> about God. Yes, maybe that's the reason why I I don't desire to go for lecture or anything like that because I'm just satisfied wherever I am and whatever I do. The initiate people are mostly like that. Many of them have this satisfaction right away at the time of initiation and continue forever. And some of them have to wait some sometimes to realize that they have found a treasure. Why is it so? Some people curtain are thicker than others, <laughs> right? Because we are uh, obst uh, obstructed by intellectual understanding and by many of the knowledge that we have accumulated during our lifetime, and we are proud of it. Proud of it and cling to that. That's why we have forgotten that we are greater than this knowledge, greater than the PhD uh, a certificate, greater than the name that we are proud to have, like Dr. So-and-so. Hmm? Or, or I'll say, uh, certain, certain position. We are greater than this, greater than any king on this earth. Sometimes we don't even realize that we have this ego and that, that, that we, we are uh, trapped into this ego, uh, how to say, um, the, the, the Maya net. We don't even realize it until we practice more and more and more. And the more we practice, the more we, real, re, we realize that we are obstructed by our own habit, by our own collection of garbage, <laughs> of a lot of Nonsense, non nonsensical thinking. Is that right? Nonsensical. Oh, I forgot English. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. If we speak Chinese or Vietnamese all the time, we forget also English. Me too. Similarly, every day we're busy with our daily work and we're busy with our worldly knowledge 
and we think we know that much, this much, and then we forgot that we are the, the great one. We know more than that. We know above all these things, including these things. Now, the greatest power, the great wisdom is so big like that, for example, so great, so pervasive. And then, and then we use that great wisdom just to understand a little bit of, of the worldly knowledge, for example, your medical knowledge or lawyer knowledge or anything. And then we cling to that, the whole, the whole wisdom <laughs> we use just to pay attention to this corner of the knowledge. Therefore, we forgot the whole. Understand what I mean? Yeah, that's it. And we thought that we are very great already. We are this uh, doctor and that PhD. I, I don't mean to talk about you. I say we mean including myself. Huh? Sorry. So now, now we think we know that much. We are beautiful. We have uh, this and this certificate and that. In fact, we lost the whole 99.9999 percent <laughs> of our great wisdom just to pay for that much worldly knowledge, and in the end, we have nothing. Because this is ephemeral, this knowledge we change. Because we know many medical definitions or many medicines has been proved, you know, outdated, and then replaced by another. Our scientific fact has been always changed and removed and replaced by another idea. And then it will be replaced again and again as mankind progress into a higher consciousness. Therefore, it doesn't matter how much knowledge, knowledge we gain from this world or from the brain power of research, we will never have the whole thing, just one little point in the universe. Just like the water in the cup is proud that he's so big <laughs> and he doesn't know that he's the whole ocean. You know, when he's connected with the whole ocean, he became the ocean. Uh, I guess you understood what I say, or not? You did? Did I make you go to sleep? No, huh? okay, fine. Actually, if you go to sleep, it's, it's not true sleep. <laughs> yes, you've probably been knocked out by the supreme power, <laughs> just like the microphone before. <laughs> Master, why Krishna Murti said, Gurus and religion are, are crutch, so he refused to be their crutch for his students. What does it mean, crutch? Um, I think it's ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, why didn't you ask him? Hmm? I'm not responsible for anybody else's teaching. <laughs> Everyone has his own independent thinking and philosophy, provided he keep it for himself. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. Probably what he meant is that if you too attached, right, to religious dogma or to any teacher as, at all, then you will be handicapped. In that sense, he is correct. The teacher or the master is not the one on which you lean, but from which you gain experience and wisdom, and then you walk yourself, okay? Most of the time, if a teacher is worth his salt, he should teach the student this way. You know what I mean? Yes? But never mind, even then, even then, if a student of any um, master should feel that he was not able to uh, yet to develop himself, right? Then he can pray to the master in the initial stage of his spiritual practice. And later when he grow up, he just automatically dropped the master. It's just like a person. Not everybody can walk straight. I need an umbrella to walk. My legs are weak sometimes, you know? So, but when my legs are okay, then I don't, don't need it, yeah? And somebody, uh, sometimes they're naturally born handicapped or accidentally uh, handicapped, and then they need the crutch. It's okay with him. You can't just kick him out and say, you don't need the crutch. It will make you dependent. <laughs> Understand? Yes. So um, we cannot just say like this, black and white, to say the master, the guru, or the religion are no good absolutely for people. It's good to someone, right? 
If you don't need it, it's fine. If you need it, well, stay a while until you don't. So I don't uh, preach anything extreme. For my opinion, religion is also very good for many people. At least they learn the virtuous way of life. They fear God, they fear the law of course and retribution, and many people became good. I tell you the truth. But as long as we don't, as long as we know that this is not the ultimate, you know what I mean? Yes, ultimate, not the ultimate. Just like, for example, the master in the physical body is not the ultimate. You know, the ultimate is inside the master and inside you. <laughs> Through the master, you will find the ultimate. That's fine, that's fine. Yes. And if you haven't, find it, haven't found it yet, you, you can rely on the master and help, yeah? And carry you for a while. And then you can walk, it's fine. But there's no such thing extreme as to throw away everything altogether. Master, how long have human beings been on this earth? Wow. I have to... <coughs> I have to count on the fingers, no? <laughs> do you know how long? What for do we know how long? Hmm? It's enough to work every day. <laughs> it's been a long, 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 long time. Some have reincarnated, some have been liberated, some come back again and again. If you want to count this, it's difficult. <laughs> you can say, I'll say, eons has passed. Does one have to give up all other teachings, gurus, etc., when initiated by Master Ching Hai? If one doesn't become initiated, can one still pray to Master Ching Hai and receive her blessing? You don't have to give up your teaching and your teacher. I told you already. Eh? And no religion. You don't have to give up religion either. For example, I am initiated, right? I used to talk about Bhagavad Gita. I used to talk about the Bible, the Buddhism, and and other things, other masters, even past masters. So I didn't give up anything. I just enriched myself with more wisdom, more knowledge <laughs> from different masters, past, present, and maybe future. Future, the future master you can, you can meet in the higher sphere because they have not yet descended on earth. But while in meditation, you can see the future master as well and learn from them. So you lose nothing, you only gain, eh? okay? <laughs> And uh, if you are not initiated and you pray to the so-called Master Ching Hai, I don't know if she helped you or not. You have to ha ask her at that time. <laughs> maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. It depends on you, how sincere you are and your karma. Huh? Master, when I meditate, my mind, I cannot keep my mind concentrated here. It runs all over the place and, and it talks about all kinds of different subjects. How do I concentrate or meditate better? Is that the initiated or not? Are you initiated? Because I will answer differently. Who has that Who question? Who this question? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. yes. yes. I don't have to show your face. If you're so lousy, don't stand up. <laughs> that's why you didn't answer. Okay. So the problem is, <clears throat> that's why we have to go to group meditation, you see, because uh, the concentrated power will help us and uh, we have to take time, yes. Some people can concentrate right away, some people take a longer time. I have mentioned previously in the lecture. Also, forgive yourself. The situation in this world is not conducive to our tranquil meditation and calm thinking. So, but try again and again. But in this world, we have a dis uh, uh, an advantage is that because this was so difficult for us to practice. Therefore, God's blessing is with us manifold. Yeah? So we walk, we walk one step, and the Master Power will walk ten hundred steps to help us. Yeah? So if we, uh, if we are in heaven and practice, it's not that uh, lucrative. Yes. Therefore, in heaven, if you want to practice, take a longer time. For example, here, we practice one day is equal to, in heaven, one hundred days. That's why many divas, I mean heavenly beings, they like to be incarnated into human body in order to practice faster. Eh? Because here we have all kind of 
uh, rubbing force like karma and situation and disaster and war and suffering and happiness, all this mixing. It's a kind of so it's a kind of uh, kind of high 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 degree fire to um I say to um to grill us, right? Uh, you say that when you, you make the uh, iron into a knife, I think? Oh, forge, yes, yes. This, yes, this fire will forge us into a strong, you know, useful tool, yes, for ourselves and for the world. And while we are practicing here, we have also the opportunity to help our failure beings, and therefore we gain more merit as well. For example, you meditate alone at your home, so you have only one personal merit. Well, but if you, through your effort, or through your, um, how to say, eloquence, whatever, you be able to uh, offer your place, for example, for a hundred person to meditate, then you have a hundred more, uh, you see, merit to add up to your personal merit. So you have a hundred times more, quicker. You understand what I mean? Yes. Or you get another hundred person to come in to get initiation. These merit are also yours because, after all, we are one. Yes, the more we connected with more the people, the the more expand we become and the greater we become. In terms of uh, of merit, um, mathematic wise speaking, it's like that. Okay, so it's better than in heaven. In heaven, everybody is having a good time, and so they take it, take it easy. <laughs> Yes. They don't have the motivation behind them to push them to concentrate. Understand what I mean? When some, that's why I say when you're in deep sorrow or when you're despaired, you, you pray better, no? And sometimes you meditate even better. At that time, you remember the Master more. You say, Oh, Master, please. <laughs> please, 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 please. Yes, and then you get better experience that day, right? Bigger light, stronger sound. Of you more elated, yeah, more near to God. Is that not so? Near to God, yeah. So it is good to practice in this world, even though it's difficult. And I'm happy that many of our fellow initiates practice very diligently. Well, some come to the center just to look around, but later, <laughs> well, they don't look around that long because everybody close their eyes, so <laughs> so they feel <laughs> embarrassed after some time, and then they also close their eyes, yeah. And then they see something inside instead of looking at pretty girls outside. Yeah, so that's a very good advantage of having a temple or having a center where people come together and do the same thing, concentrate, and one pointedness, thinking of God, that helps very much. So you take your time. Yeah, you can look around for a while, and then when you're fed up with it, you close your eyes and meditate with other people. <laughs> okay, and the mind is always having trouble to be controlled. That's why we have to practice every day. Otherwise, I would tell you, get initiation and you are the Buddha. No more work, right? Yes, because our habit is long, long term. It has been many thousands of years time, maybe more. So to take one lifetime <laughs> to clear all this, you know what I mean? It's a hard work, but it's worth it. Or oh, you want to stay here a thousand more years to continue to do that? Huh? Well, it's fun, no? <laughs> All right. So that's why I tell you to have to meditate longer time, you know, two and a half hour or three hours, because the first twenty minutes is struggling. Just go on, go on with it. And after about twenty minutes over, you know, after twenty minutes, it begins to settle down. And after half an hour, and you begin to enjoy. At Forty minutes, you're gone. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> For what purpose has mankind been created in this life life form? Is there any human-like life in another plan in the universe? Yes, there are human lives in other universe, in other planet. How do we? And for what purpose? I don't know. <laughs> That you have to ask the Creator when you go up there. Hmm? I never ask Him why, because I don't ask that many questions. I'm a kind of quiet person. <laughs> okay. How do we know to liberate ourselves from suffering, painful emotions at the right time, when we want so bad to let go of the lives, the circumstances around us, 
but it's so hard to see through because of the people we're attached to and know that there's more than life more than life itself than just ourselves and love of some ones that we couldn't let go I told you just forgive yourself and try it again hmm? sometimes in some circumstances we are able to control ourselves but with some great effort and some other time we don't want to control ourselves or we can't control ourselves in either way you just do what is good for you at that moment okay don't worry much about the emotion it's only that the waves on the surface of the ocean is it's not the ocean's fault is the wind is the as i say the as i say the cir circulation, circulation of the earth yeah no not really the revolution a rotation of the earth that make the waves all right so the ocean cannot blame itself all the time say say he makes waves he make trouble for the boats and he make trouble for people etc etc he can't help himself the ocean cannot help herself or himself huh is him ocean or he she ocean <laughs> whatever you want to call oh, you it. never know okay well that's make it the she because i'm ching hai <laughs> ching hai means pure ocean <laughs> Actually, in India, the name Vishuddhananda. Vishuddhananda, is that right? Ching Ocean, pure ocean, right? Yes. Because uh, the other day, I think I have to change my name into Indian name now to attract more Americans. <laughs> the other day, one of the American disciples said to me, "Oh, um, all the Americans like Indian teacher only, you know. So that's why you don't know, attract them so much. You attract only the Vietnamese and the Asian." I said, "Okay, so why don't?" I changed my name. He said, "Do you have an Indian name, by the way?" I said, "Yes, I do. Visudananda. <laughs> That's a translation of my name. <laughs> yes, anything Ananda, da da da, we do. <laughs> so it's very much Indian. <laughs> so now you can call me Ananda, Visudu Ananda. So it sounds very Indian, right? <laughs> okay. How do we attain inner peace or happiness in everyday life? How you attain that? How do we attain? Ah, yes, slowly. <laughs> After initiation, yes. the more wisdom, the more this peace and grace from God we we receive, the more peaceful our life will be. But only if you won't be a master. I can't promise you a peaceful life if you want to be a master. But if you are a disciple. Everything perfect. <laughs> Dear Master, I always make the same mistake that I don't want to make. I feel there are two of me inside, one good and one bad. How can I stop this? Mm. How can you stop that? Well, maybe that's the balance, the balance uh, proportion in your life that you need. Yeah, you need to learn. Actually, we can't be too good all the time. You break. Yeah. You see the, the the man in the circus when he walk the rope, yeah, he has to walk this side that side. You know what I mean? One time he's dipping in this side, and the other side he, he the other time he's uh, uh, sliding to this side. Otherwise, if he just walk like this, he he will fall down. Hmm? This life has two sides. Anyhow, one is positive, the other is negative. One is happiness, the other one is misery. So sometimes we can't help ourselves. To dip from one side to another, it's okay. Forgive yourself. Try if you can. If not, forgive yourself. All right. And now, do, doing other things in contradiction to that, to 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 counter attack this habit if you think it's bad. For example, for example, if you are normally very uh, stingy, right? Don't want to give to people. Now force yourself to give. Okay. <laughs> All right. Every time you want to take, instead you give. So next time he dare not want to take anymore, <laughs> because every time he want to take, he lost the business. <laughs> For example, you want to take one dollar, right? And then force yourself to give two dollars. So, so next time he dare not <laughs> want anymore. Okay. Or if you normally like to look at other women besides your wife, so every time you want to do like that. Just go home and look at your wife. 
So next time, if you're fed up, you don't want it anymore. <laughs> okay? Maybe try it. Mm. Some religions are saying that the end of the world is coming. What is the true meaning of this saying? No religion ever say that. Only the Christian religion, right? What? Christian yeah. religion? I mean, uh, the Bible. Bible didn't say we end at 2000, no? The Bible just uh, have some revelation about some kind of destruction of the world, okay? But that is one man's experience only. And we, many, some of the people, sometimes have this kind of experience. You know what I mean? When you enter into some kind of destructive past, when you have seen it before in your previous lives, and then now you saw it and you thought it will be this time for this earth. It's not true. Maybe you see other, the end of the other galaxy, the other planet, and then you've mistaken that for this world. Or sometimes you saw it, you see it in the past, you know, mistake it for this present time. And sometimes you see it in a very, 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 very remote future, and you miscalculate the time, you thought it's now. That's why many prophecies never came true. Just recently, somebody in Kiev has predicted the end of the world, and then he shifted it three, four times. She shifted it three, four times. Supposed to be Friday, and then Friday is holiday, so it becomes Sunday, and then Sunday never came. <laughs> the end of the world comes when we die. <laughs> Anyhow, so make preparation for that day. Yeah? Be, be prepared so that when we leave this world, we go with God instead of go with the angel of death. That will be the end of our world. Hmm? Oh, okay. What is the relationship between compassion and mindfulness? <sighs> mindfulness means you concentrate. Yeah? Well, compassion means you love other people. Compassion, you have mercy. You love other beings, you love animals, you love people. You don't want to harm them. You want to help them when they're in need. That's compassion. Mindfulness is the concentration degree you get when you meditate. Okay? Earlier you said that if you open your mind to the universe, then you can gain the wisdom, knowledge, and can be able to understand any book. My question to you is, what is it, what if you were... Um, born with not so not so bright a mind how can you be able to learn the knowledge from the universe once you opened your mind when and you're born what then there's more before oh, oh wait, let me repeat that part it wasn't clear yeah what if you were born with not so bright a mind oh and there's more he okay, said, okay wait. he was asking before you answer <laughs> <laughs> I feel that you probably say that learning new knowledge would take time and hard work. For me, in the past, I had tried to learn to become a professional person. I failed because I am, I am dumb. Dump? Yeah. Dumb. Can you show me the way? To be, uh, I say, not able to learn in school doesn't mean you are dumb. Maybe you lack courage. Maybe you like good teacher, good friends, or good circumstances. Or maybe you like patient. Yeah, some people learn quicker, some people learn a little bit slower. But that doesn't mean you're dumb, doesn't mean you're stupid. Not to know your own great wisdom is the true stupidity. So I invite you to come for initiation and get to know your greatness, and then you will understand many things. Okay? Because everything I say is just it's a big mouth talk too much. Yes. Anything without experience, it's just advertising. Yeah? I can, you see, it doesn't matter how much I tell you the, the, the orange juice in my cup is very good and it's very nutritious and it's good for you and a lot of vitamin C and when you drink it, it quench your thirst. But if you ever, don't ever come in and drink it, it doesn't matter how much I say, it's all big mouth. You understand what I mean? Nonsense. Talk too much. Yeah? So the best thing is just to drink it. Get, get enlightenment. <laughs> I feel lost. I have searched and searched, but have not found home. That is where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do. How does one find home here on earth? Get enlightenment. <laughs> home is very near. It's next to you. It's uh, nearer than your skin. But if you don't have the light, you can't see it. You can't see things in the dark. Doesn't matter how near. You know, you might have a feeling about what it is, but you don't see it. You know, have to have the light. The light of God 
will shine on everything you want to search for, including home. Okay? Mm, but this is all abstract speaking. Really, you have to have experience. And that comes only with diligent practice. After initiation, you know how to practice, and you, you do it, and then you realize day by day. Okay? Why is it that after so many years of religious teachings and past masters that the world has not gotten better but much worse? Because, um, because they, they, the past master cannot teach you. We have to look for a present master who can answer your question, help you when you are in doubt, and uh, take you by the hand <laughs> back to the kingdom of God. We need a person-to-person -person contact, you know, not the past life. Just like it doesn't matter how how great the the the. Mm. the beauties of the past, you know, you, you cannot marry her, hmm? cannot. And you cannot produce children to you, cannot produce the love feeling that you have with a, with a living wife. I was taught in my fundamental Christian church that we were to pray only to God, not to Jesus, not to Virgin Mary, not to the angels, not to anyone or anything, but only to God, the Father of Jesus the creator of the universe. Why then are people praying to you as a master or to any master? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's their problem. Mm. <laughs> you see, just like before, somebody asked me if he doesn't want to get initiation, that means he doesn't want to get direct contact with God, can he pray to Master Ching Hai? Or what can I do about that? Well, if she prays, she gets the response, so she continues to pray. But I always advise that you go for initiation, right? And get contact directly with God and pray directly to God. That's the best way. But if somebody don't want to choose that way and they want to choose the second, second way, easier way, you know, <laughs> no vegetarian, no two and a half hour meditation, no rules, <laughs> nothing, just want the benefit, then she will pray to whomever, give her something, you know? And it happened that probably he prayed to Jesus or Buddha and doesn't get help, so she prayed to Ching Hai. And when she gets help, she keeps praying again. People like that, they, they like prophet. You know, the thing is, the truth is that any living master will respond to our prayer. But then when that master passes away, people continue to pray because they learn that from their, <laughs> from their parents, from their ancestors, and then they continue to pray. And they forgot the difference between a living master and the de uh, the <laughs> past masters. <laughs> so they continue to pay, pray to the past masters, and sometimes they blame that it doesn't help them. But actually, any master, when you pray to any master, that means you pray to the to God anyhow. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yes, because the master is connected with God, so you just pray to God. What is there inside except God? You think you pray to Ching Hai? Who is Ching Hai? When you think of her, who is he? Who is she? What is that? Only God resides in her body, nothing else there. So you pray to her and she's connected with God. Then, then it's the God that you pray to, understand? I am asking this question for a friend. So since I'm asking you, I'm asking for him. And it's okay. He would like to know if it is so wrong that he separates his parents for a good cause. Because for a what? For a Separate. good, separates his, for a good cause, because one of his parents does not allow the other one to practice meditation. Mm -hmm. And he would like to know if his action, you know, I think to separate them, mm -hmm. is related to karma. And if he practices meditation, will that correct the wrong action that he did? By Never mind. You should let time take its course. Yeah? And whatever concerns your parents, you don't worry. Okay? You don't worry. Because the time will come when things will change. Yes. If you try to force the issue uh, before time is right, you will incur some trouble, and sometimes uh, you incur, you know, of course the karma. Yeah. Master said that water in the cup is the same with water in the ocean, but because of our egos, which separates water from the cup of the ocean, mm. is it right that meditation means making a hole at the bottom of the cup? to have the water merge with the ocean? Initiation means that, yes. 
open the, the, the connected uh, hole, and then so the water can come in and out all the time. So the water in the cup is the water in the ocean, and the water in the ocean is the water in the cup. Yes. And every day you meditate, it's just like water flowing in and out all the time, make it fresh. So the water in the cup is not become rotten and so. Final question, uh, how should one meditate? <laughs> you meditate the way you want. And if you don't know, you come for initiation and we help you, okay? Actually, you should not ask me any question at all, because it doesn't matter how many answers you have. What's the use? The only best way is that we get enlightenment and know all the answers, or we get to the stage when we don't care for any answer at all, and then we set ourselves free forever from any inquisitiveness, from every, how to say, um, desire to know things. That is the time when we know everything. Whatever we need to know, we will know right away. And whatever we don't need to know, we still know it, but inside we don't use it. Understand? Mm. Don't feel sorry when I left, huh? <laughs> oh, we got special delivery, urgent, oh. Federal Express right here. <laughs> right. My husband has a terrible skin disease for eight years already. Mm. I love him very much and I have tried many ways, doctors, medicines, religion, meditation, and hope to cure his disease. All kind of meditation as well? Yeah, meditation too. Yeah. He meditates? He himself? Uh, yes. Or the wife? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't say, but it is getting worse and worse every day. Oh. Now every time I look at him, my tears fall, mm -hmm. and even worse, I begin to dream about an other man when I am so sad. Mm -hmm. Am I bad and disloyal, unloyal? Or how can I cure my mind and my sadness? No, no, you're not bad. Just the situation is bad. She forgot to mention that if her husband meditates or, or she meditates, because the husband should meditate and pray for himself. Is God a person, a being, a supernatural entity, or what? All that. All that and more. <laughs> now, everyone, when we have sickness, we should uh, try to first accept it. Second, try to find a way to cure it. There must be some way to cure things. And uh, above all, we have to pray to the Supreme Power to help us. And pray, but pray deeply. Sometimes the diseases are, are caused by past karma, past reaction, past, I think, retribution, that we have done something wrong or to harm somebody else, appearance. Therefore, now we have to reap this result. But after sometimes, if the karma wears off, then it begins to, to, to get better. But there are many ways to cure skin disease. I have seen many people with a lot of, um, you know, I, I don't know what, very, very bad looking skin, but they still have the cure for it. So maybe you didn't search enough. You have to ask for many more ways to do it. Or tell your husband to pray himself, yeah, or meditate. Well, we we don't we don't. Um, I cannot guarantee you that initiation will cure your disease, or your husband's disease. Because I don't want to attract people to come to our group just because of the physical condition. That's not enough to liberate you, because we are still clinging to the material instead of wanting God, the giver of all things. Once we truly want God, He will give. But if we only want the things, you know what I mean? Sometimes He gives, sometimes He doesn't. That's the trouble. In India, there was a story about a king who, who liked to give all his things to his subject, so he arrayed all his treasure around and tell everyone to come and take whatever they, they like. 
and people take di took diamonds or took gold or took treasure or took you know antique cups and all that and then they were, everybody was happy to go home you know, one girl only she didn't want nothing she just walked straight up to the king and she said are you also <laughs> a gift <laughs> i only want this gift yes so of course the king was very surprised and happy that somebody wants him for his sake not the things that he gives and then of course the king marry her and then all everything belong to her no <laughs> yes and there's another story to prove it <laughs> If you still have time, are you hungry? I still have half an hour. I own you only half an hour now. <laughs> ah, there was a story about Shiva. You know Shiva? The god Shiva is he here, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. With the moon, half moon, and then the the tree dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now that's him. Cause I thought he was upstairs, but he's downstairs, so I can't find him. <laughs> ah, Shiva was um, past one of the past masters, right? He's supposed to be the god of destruction. Uh, he destroy, you know, negativity. Yeah, actually, not destroy people. Well, some people misunderstand, so they worry that they dis he destroyed him. So always keep blackmailing him with all kind of fruit and cakes. <laughs> it's not the, the thing. So in the past, he meditated very deeply in the Himalaya, yeah. He never woke up from meditation, never, ever. Nothing steers him. So this is the legion from India, right? I don't know if it's true, okay? I just tell you, the power of God. They meditate all the time in the Himalaya, deep in the meditation, never steer. But some of the God in heaven was afraid that he doesn't have a wife, yes. So he will not pass out, pass down the, I say the, other generation, you know, the holy seat or something like that, the sacred uh, bloodline, yeah. Bloodline, you call it? Yeah, anyhow. So they worry very much, yeah, because he was so holy and they want to have another, as a generation of, of, of this kind. So they try, they send out a beautiful, 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 uh, say, fairy, yes. It, her name is Parvati, is that right? Parvati. 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 Parvati, yes. The name is correct, just my mis misspelling. Oh no, no, my accent is not Indian. <laughs> so then she was very beautiful, and her figure is enough to make all the men, you know, fell down <laughs> in battle. But she couldn't steal him. She tried all her best to kind of dance around him and make all kinds of things, but he never steered out of meditation. So finally she was fed up, fed up, yeah. So she went to the other side of the mountain, another, a little bit longer way, selected a mountain range, and she sat there and meditated. She said, now, oh, this is nonsense. I meditate on God, and then I get liberation and eternal bliss. That's better than to chase a man who is like stone, <laughs> have no feeling, nothing. And me, so beautiful like this, and he never steered. Wow. And she was fed up, angry, and frustrated. So she went to the other mountain. Oh, I forgot the mountain name. Kailash? No, huh? What's it? Kailash, yeah? Oh, not bad, huh? Not bad for a Vietnamese Indian. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so my memory is not bad. I'm not that old after all. Mm. I just look old. <laughs> so she went to Mount Kailash, which is the most, I can say, the most famous and holy mountain, according to Indian belief. Yeah? It's very high, and it has uh, also a very beautiful lake, you know, um, in, the, in the vicinity. They call, the, the lake is called what? You forgot? Mansarova. yes. So she stayed there and meditated, yeah? And after some time, she attained the blissful state. And so Shiva suddenly, during his meditation, deep meditation, he felt something still in him. There was some very, very, very strong, powerful, feminine energy. It was kind of, uh, you know, disturbing him. Not disturbed, but also disturbed, but making him feel very good and still, you know, excited somehow. So he opened his third eye, you know, 
and have a look and say, wow, what's that beauty over there? <laughs> oh, so that's how the romance started. Yeah, you know the rest, okay? <laughs> so that's the, that's the power of meditation, power of God. Even it make the God steer, you know what I mean? Make the most ascetic yogi, I would say, excited. <laughs> Well, if you want to get a husband, it's maybe a good advice, but <laughs> actually, when you don't want it, you get it, right? Poverty was trying her best to charm him, but she did not succeed because she tried with the ego, with the limited power of, of uh, how to say, possess possessiveness and, um, you know, mundane thinking. But when she became holy, her attraction became different. You see? Why? Because his vibration is very holy. His standard is very high. <laughs> if she used her mundane vibration and energy to attract him, how can he come down? You know what I mean? You have to be at least equal in order to attract the opponent. <laughs> Therefore, if some of the girls or boys <laughs> are not successful in catching our disciples, I, you better go and get initiation. <laughs> okay. Just a joke, okay? Just a joke. Actually, it's like that, yes. Many people have no, no, no attraction before. They suddenly, after initiation or meditate for some time, they begin to attract people. You know, not, not. Not necessarily physically, just attract them. You know, they just love them and they just want to be near them. It's just because of your vibration, your loving God energy. You know, you, you cannot conceal it. It will just radiate out and then attract people like magnet because the cell in themselves are also God-like. Yeah? So they just feel attracted to you. The same that people are attracted to the masters. But that is by no means a, a crutch. You know what I mean? It's just the self are attracted to the higher self. So after some times, they just realize that both of them are one. Therefore, who is there to get the crutch? Who is there to rely on whom? You understand what I mean? So actually, that is also the answer to that question about master and religion are crutch. Yeah, it depends, depends. Okay? So, have love. <laughs>